Welcome to our demo. I'm Anton Han, the lead artist at Rust Limited, and I'd like to present to you what we've been hard at work on this past month. If you'd like to just watch without my narration, feel free to hit the mute button on the menu in the upper right. You can also jump the shot forward or back if you'd like to catch something again. Also, if you'd like to jump right into exploring the environment yourself, click the first person mode button. I'm going to focus my talk here on two DX11-centric systems we've been building and experimenting with that are already finding a major place in our production process, GPU simulated particles and displacement tessellation. For producing this demo, we here at Rust teamed up with Arthur Brousset of TinyCube Studio to do a full-scale test of the DX11 particle system he's been working on for Unity 4. These particle systems are simulated with a compute shader on the GPU. This enables us to use particle counts several orders of magnitude above the breaking point for a CPU-bound system, and allows for far more complex movement and collision behavior at a fraction of the performance cost. Patterned after the type of feature set you'd find in CG visual effects solutions, our system has a suite of dynamic forces, including Newtonian attractors, drag effectors, and vortices, each with variable attenuation and volume. We've also implemented volumetric turbulence forces, with several styles and complete control over the noise generation. This can be constrained to a small volume or repeated infinitely throughout a space, ensuring particle movement always possesses naturalistic chaos. The system also has two forms of collision, the first of which is dynamic. Thanks to some, quote, fancy maths, this system does not use raycasts, but superfast sphere collision, so collision between dozens of primitives and hundreds of thousands of particles is possible. Additionally, the system supports the baking of a layer of static colliders to a volume texture, allowing for huge optimization benefits for scene-wide static geometry at the cost of precision. The payoff for these systems, as you might imagine, is a deeper integration in the behavior of visual effects with other scene content. With a CPU-bound system, the VFX artist is often left with having to choose between particle-dense systems with visual depth or sparse systems relying mostly on sprite animation when employing complex movement and collision behavior. With the power of DX11-driven GPU particles, scene-wide effects can be achieved with massively complex, nuanced particle systems. For our demo environment, our shader ninja Josh Oles extended a set of shaders we've been working on to include the latest DX11 toys available in Unity 4. These shaders utilize a physically-based shading model, which generates far more accurate and interesting reflective properties, and allows for a far more consistent and precise content authoring workflow. This shading model draws from two per-pixel specular properties from texture sampling. F0, which represents surface reflectivity, and roughness. This allows for having portions of the same material and texture canvas to have dramatically different specular behavior. The shader also maintains its specular identity well across transitions between dynamic and baked lighting. With Unity 4 now here, we've taken the opportunity to integrate what I feel is the hallmark visual feature of DX11, displacement tessellation. For those of you not familiar with the feature, it is a real-time displacement technique which dynamically subdivides geometry based on its distance to the camera using a height map. Games using displacement technology most commonly employ it for adding complex, noisy topology to naturalistic objects, as we've done here with the outer cave wall. By using a very contrasty elevation map, the displacement texture does more than add surface detail, but helps to create a much more interesting macro shape. If you tour around the environment, you can see a suite of small experiments we've done using various material properties alongside tessellation. Beyond just adding complexity to static environment objects, we've created a number of objects that really play around with using tessellation as a tool for topology animation. This little example uses two scrolling displacement maps blended together to get a sort of rippling liquidy effect. This goofy example shows a similar technique, pulsing the intensities of the two displacement maps out of phase. Lastly, this mildly excessive example shows off nearly all of the shader's properties being animated in unison. In closing, we hope that this gets you all excited about some of the possibilities with using DirectX 11 for shader and visual effects. I know I've been having a blast. If you haven't yet, make sure to jump into first-person mode and explore the environment. Otherwise, this demo will continue to loop sans the narration. Thanks for watching.